the thing is, is that guys who are nice, guys that would actually be fantastic husbands, great fathers, they're usually not particularly exciting. And a lot of women are attracted to exciting men that can, yeah. you, you often hear women say, I don't feel the click, I don't feel the spark, I don't feel the, the connection, I don't feel the, the chemistry. So a guy who's gonna be a, who's a good person, who would be a good father, good partner, he might not be capable of eliciting, he might, not, he might not be particularly charismatic or conversationally, maybe he's a bit, a bit shy when he's first meeting you. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Nick Davenport, AKA Mr. Mental Muscle. We're back today on the Mental Breakdown channel. And we have a clip from the Whatever podcast. I stumbled across this. It seems to be another one of the dating podcasts where a bunch of women come on a the panel. There's a male host. He asks me a bunch of questions. They seem to be between the ages of like 18 and 25. This is, seems to be the new standard now. But this clip was pretty good because I saw they were talking about the classic old good guys finish last. Why do women want the bad boy? Now, I've talked about this months ago on a video about the dark triad and things of that nature. And this can play into this. But they mentioned on this clip, you saw that they said, why don't they want the man who does the good morning text, take them out, treat them right. But they want the bad boys who elicit more of a makes my heart flutter, the butterflies. And they talk about the spark. And this is pretty interesting because the spark, I've even experienced this. I remember there was a girl who said, you're cool and all, Nick, but I didn't feel the spark. And I'm the type of guy, I called it out and said, what do you mean? Like, you claim you like this about me and we went out a few times, but what was the spark? And the funny thing is, even on this date, we really didn't talk too much about like really anything other than her exes and bad times. So that's a whole other topic. But the point is the spark, what does that actually mean? Because when you meet someone, you know nothing about them. Now think about that logic. What in life do we say immediately I have to know so I'm gonna get it, buy it, do it? Most things in life, we do not do that. We plan out thoroughly, whether it be finding the right college, the right job, the right car, the right house. It takes months, sometimes even more of research and learning and experiencing so we know this is the right choice to make. But for some reason, when it comes to dating, all of a sudden it's, I want to feel it right then and there, which makes no logical sense. And this is a problem. This is why the spark is probably the, the dumbest things you could do if you want a, a successful relationship. Think about your friends. What friends you have in your life, male or female, if you're a man listening to this and you have male friends, female have female friends, whatever. What is the way you found them or met them? It probably wasn't the first day you say, we hit it off and we're best friends forever. It might seem that way, but more than likely, especially if they're childhood friends, proximity played a role there. You might have hit it off true, had a, a good chemistry, but if you're around them every day, more than likely, you're gonna grow that bond over time, right? But with dating, we don't really do this. If we don't have that spark, we don't hit it off like we want to, it's bye. And this is not a smart strategy at all because how do you find something good if you dismiss it off the first time, looking at it, trying it? Now, granted, there are some people that, or at least in this case, guys that can come off horrible and you know they're not the one, fine. But when you go with the spark, that's a fleeting emotion. Our brains, they're very susceptible to a lot of things. There's a lot of cognitive biases that can mess up our judgment. You might hear or see things and say, hey, if this person did this in the past that hurt me or did me wrong or treated me a certain way I didn't like, and he did anything similar, your brain jumps to conclusions, this is not what we want. And on the contrary, we get these things that we see in the media or social media and content that we say, that's what I want. These celebrities that go on these lavish trips or they do these, these gestures, grand gestures, and it's like, that's a relationship I want when you don't even know what goes on behind closed doors. And granted, more than likely, that's not an everyday occurrence. So we judge things based off of the wrong factors and we embed them into real life. And therefore, this spark doesn't happen. Now, getting back to the bad boys, because this all comes full circle, there is studies and there's even a, a book called The Science of Happily Ever After. I talk about this book all the time and it's by Dr. Tai Tashiro. And he talks about how agreeableness, a personality trait for people who are not that combative, they usually can go along with the group. They're more understanding and sympathetic. They tend to be better at romantic relationships, especially men. Long-term relationships do better with men who are agreeable. But the problem with that is bad boys, the ones who give you that spark, that heart fluttering, that rush, they're not agreeable. They're going to go against the grain. You're going to see them uh, uh, disobey authority. You're going to see them do things that aren't status quo. But guess what? Those things aren't long-term sustainable. Those people are the ones who tend to get in trouble with the law or they're cheaters. They like to do things that are new. And guess what? Novelty seeking is high on women for the fact that they want different experiences, which is great. But the risk is someone who's always giving you different experiences is not consistent. And who would want an inconsistent relationship? Do you see where this is going? The things that most women want, consistency, 
people who listen, nurturing, sympathetic, understanding, is not what a bad boy is going to be. And that comes back to this dark triad. Now, I talked about this before. Now, the dark triad is three different traits. It's narcissism, which gets used way too much, but narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. Now, these three different terms are subclinical when I'm talking about it right now. I'm not talking about to the fact that they're clinical, which could be a very bad thing, but subclinical if you exhibit these traits. So narcissism being fulfilled with oneself, having like a God complex, they try to bring everything about them. They don't do things for other people's intent. And if they do help other people, it's probably get a bigger goal that helps them. And this kind of segues into Machiavellianism. Think about Niccolo Machiavelli. He wrote the book about the prince. So this is being deceptive, using people for your gain, cheating, stealing, lying, conniving, stabbing in the back so you can overcome. This is usually associated with like politicians. And then the last one, psychopathy, this is people who have indifference to emotion. They can act without really caring. It's not to say that they don't understand it, but they don't really care because at the end of the day, it don't affect them, right? So think about all these three put together. This is the prototypical bad boy. The prototypical bad boy is a guy who doesn't care, he's full of himself, and he does whatever it takes to get what he wants. And this is what the girls want because if a bad boy comes up to you, he's going to put in that game, talk to you, get to know you. So he's sugarcoating everything so he can fall under his spell. And then when he gets you and does what he wants to do, he says, all right, who cares? Go on about your life. That's a psychopathy that's being indifferent. And he's probably going to be narcissistic because it's all about him getting what he wants, not you. And that's the polar opposite. And that's the complete polar opposite of the agreeable man who's going to be able to say, hey, What's going on? Can we talk about this? Can I understand better so I can help you? It sounds good in theory, right? On paper, that's the great guy, right? And it's even said that they're better even lovers. So the point is, they don't want that. So this clip sells a lot about human behavior. And that's why I love the psychology and all this stuff, because typically we don't understand these things just happen by nature. It's not right or wrong, because there's links to say someone who has some of those dark triad traits. It's not a bad thing. You need it to some degree. I got to be a guy who can be like, different stoic when the things really hit the fan, right? But I can't be that all the time. Just like I can't be agreeable all the time because then people are going to walk over me and what girls want me to lead her if I can't step up and do what I need to do. Sometimes you got to be like, nah, that's not flying. You have to do that. So there has to be a fair balance. So it's not like a complete one or the other. There's a definitely spectrum you got to fall on. And when it comes to girls, if you're listening, picking a mate, think about that. Find a man who has agreeable traits where he understands like, hey, I need to listen to you and see where you're coming from. But when he needs to step up and take charge, he can do that too. There's a balance and these men do exist, but I see they lean more to the other, the bad boys, because they're more overt with it. You're going to know that they're about their business and it may not be the best business you want to be in. So think about that. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you leave some comments, like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts. If you're ladies out there, you dated a bad boy, is that your preference? If it is, let me know what you thought. And as always, thanks for letting me break it down and get your mind right.